This is how I build my altimeter bays. There are a lot of different ways to do this. I've seen them in many configurations. Uh, this is how I like to do it, and this has worked well for me. So I'll show you the internals and how I set everything up. I find this setup to be robust, and I've had really good luck with it. So let's take a look at what's inside. This is a dual Altus Metrum Easy Mini setup. One is primary and the other one is secondary. And the reason I do that is so that I have redundant dual deploy. The rocket's large and heavy. It's five and a half inches in diameter. So I just think it's a good practice for something that large and heavy to be redundant. It has two power supplies and these are nine volt batteries. They are nine volt lithium ions. And I'll talk about that in just a minute. So the secondary is set up to deploy about one second or so later than the primary. And that way I have a backup in case there's a power failure or some sort of other failure on one or the other. On the ends, I have used brass knurled knobs right here. I like them because they are robust and they look pretty cool, <laughs> uh, but they really offer a secure connection and I clean them up with Scotch-Brite or a little bit of sandpaper. Also do a continuity test on both posts here to make sure everything's uh, what it should be, that there's continuity before I go out to the rail and load the rocket up. The um, ejection charge canisters are just simply a pill bottle that I got from Amazon and I cut the lid off it and they'll hold uh, three grams or a little bit more of black powder, which is more than sufficient for this rocket. They'll probably hold up to four grams. I'm going to use three uh, in the payload section, but uh, there's plenty of room for them. They're inexpensive and they look nice like that. It's really easy to cut them off and they make uh, super solid ejection charge canisters. The switch is a Schurter rotary switch and uh, that's what I choose to use. There's different ways of doing it, many different ways of setting up the altimeter bay or electronics bay. I like the shorter switches because I just like that nice click when I arm it. There's something about that. I just uh, really feel confident that it's energized and ready to go. Uh, you could also use a push button or a screw switch or whatever. I 3D printed, designed and 3D printed this little housing here to hold it in there. And if I ever need to change it, I can just unscrew it and take it off. I also 3D printed the nine volt battery covers and uh, I have plenty of room, so I don't really have to worry about it. Uh, they do take up some room, but it's convenient just to hold them down. Uh, you can use zip ties, and I'll show you another altimeter bay where I did use zip ties and a few differences there. But anyways, this has worked well for me. I use a crimp-on connector. Now, these are kind of finicky. I like that they clip and offer a click when they connect, but to crimp them... Is rather difficult uh, it's just kind of finicky but uh, once they're together they work really well and they do positively latch to each other as you can see I've used different colors of wire to know which one is the primary and which is the backup the backup charge I typically make a little bit larger uh, you can make it the same but uh, if I'm doing a backup and this is an emergency charge I just really want to make sure everything gets blown out Okay, let's take a second and we'll talk about the batteries. This is the electronics board that I use for burning money. I've launched it many times. I have a Easy Mini altimeter here and I have a Perfect Flight CF altimeter here. Now, I use the Perfect Flight because I had it first and then I added the backup redundancy later. Uh, the Perfect Flights are they're great flight computers, but they're, they're difficult to find. They're just uh, not produced in volume, and um, it was one of the earlier computers that worked well. I do like the Easy Mini. I found that has served me quite well. As you can see, I have dual battery backup again, and I used um, zip ties, which is what most people do to hold the battery down. I could make a cover for this. Uh, but this works, so I'll probably just leave it the way it is. I've used uh, copper tubing here for the ejection charge, and um, that works well. Uh, it's easy to make up. Uh, it's not that hard to solder. And I make one taller than the other, so it's easy to identify which one is the primary and which one's the backup. Because, as I said previously, sometimes I, I bump that charge up. Uh, for the switch, I have a... A rotary switch, the shirter switch, and I've built this up 
so that the rotary switch is close to the airframe so that I don't have to hunt with a screwdriver as I'm trying to uh, make that connection there and, and arm it, energize it. It's kind of uh, wonky looking there, but it does work. And that's why I started 3D printing my own housing uh, so that I can uh, just have a, a nicer look to it and make sure that that switch is nice and close to the airframe. Again, I'm back to the crimp on connections because they're just reliable and uh, just some zip ties to hold everything together. So there, I think you can see that uh, kind of the same idea. Uh, this is a combination of different parts, but the, uh, the first altimeter bay or the first um, electronics sled was from Lock Precision and all the parts were from Lock Precision that were plywood. Okay, let's talk about those lithium ion batteries. One of the reasons why I went to a 9 volt battery was this. See all that? Yeah, I don't really care for all that. I only need this one, the JST. And uh, you have to know how many volts, how many cells, and the charge rate. You have to be pretty much, I think, a battery expert to use one of these. Some of you may disagree, but I'm a rocket guy, not a battery guy, electronics guy. So uh, I started using the LiPo batteries and yeah, they work great, but uh, you do have to maintain them. And um, they come in all different shapes and sizes. And one of the sizes that I use regularly was discontinued. And then none of my batteries fit into the holder. So I still use these on some of my sleds, but um, I went to the nine volt. Now this is a Duracell battery and this is a lithium ion battery. They're both the same size. This one, the lithium ion weighs about half of the Duracell. That doesn't really matter to me but it may matter to some, I don't know. Uh, but this is a universal size and it's uh, just easier to make a carrier for it. It has plenty of capacity. I've known several people that have lost their rockets because it sat out on a pad for a couple of hours. They ran out of battery power, out of voltage, and the rocket just came in really hot. So, and that was the end of it. So uh, that's one thing I like about the higher capacity batteries. And the only thing that you need to know about this lithium ion battery is where to charge it. Yep, it takes a regular USB-C. You can use your phone charger. You don't have to know how many volts, how many cells, how fast you have to charge it. All that is already contained in the battery itself. So to me, that just makes it simpler, uh, more airproof, and uh, it just it just works well. So. Uh, I have several of them, and uh, I, this particular battery comes with a whip where I can charge, uh, I think, four of them at one time. That's convenient. And uh, I put them in the freezer for a couple of days, and they still have their voltage when they came out of the freezer. I also flew Burning Money, an eight-foot-tall rocket, uh, in January of 2024. And I flew it on one of these and a Duracell just as a backup to make sure. And it was only 5 degrees Fahrenheit outside. So, yeah, it was super cold. And I've flown them when it's quite warm. So there doesn't appear to be any uh, issue with battery temperature. They're just reliable, at least so far at this point. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to give this a try. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. That was lovely. Ass kicker. That was fun. Yeah, no, I don't see any cars. Back behind us. I can see it. First event. Yep, I see it. Back up. Wow. Oh boy. That's way up there.